as you know elections as you know elections are ongoing and some of the nominees might be in this meeting so please be mindful that we won't be tolerating any campaigning during this meeting and you will be removed if you attempt to campaign just to let you know as always this meeting will be recorded and you don't need to have your camera on but if you would like your personal details removed from the recording, please email dsu.governance.durham.ac.uk by Monday morning. Just a notice about Zoom etiquette and behaviour. So we will not be tolerating any forms of abusive or aggressive behaviour. And if this happens, you'll be removed from the meeting. And this includes in inappropriate content being posted in the chat. This also applies to if people don't respect the assembly meeting format. Um, so for ease of the meeting, please could you put your initials or name in the chat if you would like to speak and I will call on you. Um, if you're not speaking, please ensure your microphone is on mute. For procedural motions, could you put these in the chat, please, or send them to Helder. In order to vote, we're going to use the raise your hand function, and I won't be counting any physical raising of hands, so please can you all check now if you're able to raise your hands, just click on it. And if anyone isn't able to, then can you please message Lauren? So yeah, I can see some, but if, you, if you're not able to, please message Lauren so that she knows when it comes to voting. Thanks, you can put them down. Um, so observers, you can use the Q&A function to ask questions and assembly members, you can also use the Q&A function. Uh, you can ask questions at any point and I'll be opening the floor to questions as well. Are there any general questions at this point before we begin? Okay, cool. So we've received apologies from Maddie, the undergraduate representative. Next thing, are there any conflicts of interests on any agenda item? If so, please declare that now. No? Okay. So you've all received the assembly papers and one of the first things we need to do is approve the minutes. So the minutes from the 9th of December meeting were circulated last week. Does anyone have any amendments to the minutes? If you do, please put your hand up. Okay, and is there a general agreement to accept the minutes as they've been submitted? Could you please press the thumbs up button if you agree. Can you keep them up so I can see if there's a majority? Okay, that's good, thank you, you can put them down. Okay, so the minutes have been accepted. Okay, cool. Now we move to routine business. So nominations for available positions. So the first order of business is nomination of members for some of the available positions we have. We've only received one nomination for NUS delegate and no nominations for governance and grants committee. I'd now like to invite Ilana to speak for one minute as to why assembly should elect her as a NUS delegate. And then after that, members can ask questions and vote for or against her nomination. Does anyone have any questions on that? Cool. Is Ilana here? You have one minute to speak. Cool. Hi. Hello. Um, hello, all. My name's Elena Khan. 
I am a second year sociology student at Collingwood. Um, I have been interested in unions and student unions, national unions, national union of students perhaps. Um, since I was a child, I was brought up in a family where we genuinely care about welfare and bettering of other people. And I have a vast experience in politics and uh, organization in school. I was um, the MUN Secretary General for two years on our DC for three. I was class president two years running. I'm currently the student uh, union rep for Collingwood and I'm also chair of the SU rep committee. I have a great deal of experience in making sure that everyone's voices are heard and trying to come up with the- You have five uh, seconds left, sorry. Uh, okay, um, I hope you work for me. Okay, thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Yeah, Jack. Thanks, yeah, it's just about the policy that we've decided to take to NUS conference. I just wondered if you had any thoughts on that and whether you'd vote for it in the priorities ballot. Um, so the freedom of speech bill, I know, is something you've been championing since first term, and I entirely agree with you on that. You know this from our meetings and from the papers and pizza, where I was very adamant on having the freedom of speech bill, what uh, Durham proposed, and I actually spoke on behalf of it at the papers and pizza. Um, I'm very much in favour of it and will try my level best to make sure it is heard and talked about um, by the NUS and that you know, we can come to some agreement on it because it is a very important issue. Thank you. Does anyone have another question? Okay, we move to a vote. So all those in favor of Alana becoming a US delegate, please raise your hands and keep them up so we can count. Okay, please lower your hands. All those against, please raise your hands. Please lower your hand. And any abstentions? Cool, that's passed. Thank you. Right, next, officer updates. So we're going to receive an update from our officer team on their priorities and work so far, and then Assembly will have the chance to ask any questions. As soon as your hand up for reason. Okay. So, yeah, Sean, do you want to go first? Uh, yes, sorry, I was, it wasn't really working. Um, hi everyone, uh, essentially what I've been working on is uh, just the induction for our new vice chancellor and new PVC of EDI. Um, a lot of the stuff that we've been doing has been dominated by strikes, as you all know, um, and just the general start of the term, um, but mostly around strikes and the new VC, and I'll take any questions. Are there any questions? Yeah, Byron. Can you um, explain, please, what, what um, you say you've been doing a lot of things around about the strikes? Can, can you explain exactly what those things are, please? Cool. So we've been having regular meetings with um, members of UCU, um, and we've been doing an education campaign, which the uh, academic officers will talk more about as well. Um, but obviously I sit on council and on Senate. So a lot of discussions have been happening in there um, around strikes, uh, but they're very much repeated from what happened last term in terms of ASOS, which is action short for strikes. Um, 
and just in general the general sentiment around it and essentially I've been getting a lot of emails from students um, who have been you know expressing some concerns some trepidations about and um, their learning outcomes and just assuring them what the what it really just looks like and how it will affect them. Any further questions, John? Um, yes, in response to the strike, the university claims when it comes to the pension, as a national policy, the universities themselves cannot do much on its own. So wouldn't this cause us a deadlock which no parties could come to a, a agreeable resolution to this matter? Yeah, well, it's a 20 year dispute um, that occurs nationally. So yes, if there's the answer to your question, probably. Okay, I'll take one more question. No. Okay, let's move on to welfare and liberation officer. Hi everyone, so let me get my notes. Um, yeah, so I've been quite busy a busy month. So it's breaking down by priority on mental health, finding the signposting guidance was just getting through like graphics and design and that's done. Um, we've launched a mental health survey. We've already had 100, I think 17 signups the last time I looked. Uh, I've after about a week and a bit, and it's just looking into mental health provisions in Durham. Um, shared it with the college reps, but I want to do a bit more comms on that. We've shared it with a lot of the course reps and I want to rather out as many students as possible. We carried out welfare training, additional welfare training to um, focusing on colleges, associations, but also student groups and Team Durham. I was a bit annoyed at the turnout from Team Durham, that's quite cool, specifically because they asked us to do this, but I wanted to also focus on sexual violence and campaign training and liberation training within that. So welfare officers don't just do welfare, they also know how to campaign on different issues, I think that's quite important. On tackling sexual violence, I persuaded the new Vice Chancellor Karen to sign the NDA pledge, it wasn't that hard. Um, so that's good, she signed to use, not use non-disclosure agreements against students on cases of sexual violence, bullying and harassment. The pledge has been signed, which is brilliant. And then supporting the associations, um, helped start organising associations week with them. I met them in person, that was really lovely, which will be a week of signposting everything they do to the wise students. students. And then I've done a lot of like little consultation or advice, so stuff on EDI, on security and bouncers, uh, reputational stuff with Women's Association, funding with LGBT diversity program. I will get back to you next week, so yeah. I'll happily answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No. Okay. Thank you. Now we move to undergraduate officer. Now than all, um, obviously the strikes are quite a big thing for me at the moment. So I've been working with the UCU on campaigning. So we've produced some uh, postcards for everyone to sign that will be easily presentable to the vice chancellor. Uh, to push university in the campaigns, but also I've been um, subjecting Seoul, uh, the head of UC, to some rather harsh questioning from the side of the students because uh, it's a harsh round of strikes this time. And from listening to students, uh, there's a lot of anger. So I've, I've done an FAQs with him um, just so that he can he can sit and answer and, and sort of um, we we can hear it from their side why why they're necessitating this this level of strike action. Um, I've been pushing for some answers on marking boycott just to just to say it's it's not currently in place, but if it is being put in place, we'll be figuring out where we stand on it. We're not currently in support of it. We're not currently against it, but we're figuring figuring out our position um, as we speak. Also working with the university on that, on ensuring the material missed due to the strikes isn't put in exams. Um, their policies just suddenly got a little bit blurred, but it it, it should be. It should be sticking to their previous policy um, and we're, we're protesting against the 25% pay cut, which is rather um, an ethical policy, with, I, I believe. Uh, in terms of um, my project, I'm working on a project with the museums, collections and archives so that we can increase the undergraduate experience of, of museums, collections and archives within their studies, making them less intimidating spaces, making more seminars happen within the museums, making undergraduates feel comfortable in using 
um, the collections and archives in their in their essays and, and dissertations. Um, so that's currently in an information gathering stage. I'm figuring out what I can best do there. Uh, I've been pushing against asynchronous timed online exams, um, which I thought was, I've speaking with loads of students, they really were against those. I've managed to restrict that to one department um, and a few exams. So, so most online exams will be 24 hour open book. And finally, in terms of SU strategy, I'm pushing the SU as a, as a proud collegiate member myself, I'm pushing the SU to continue to offer its resources to all common rooms, whether they are independent or not. Um, something I strongly believe in. I, I think we're all working for the same community and we're all working for the same students and um, the SU should support its common rooms, uh, sorry, the, the university's common rooms in, in doing that. Uh, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? No. Okay, move to postgraduate academic officer, please. Thank you. Um, a lot of my updates are quite similar. So strikes, we've been keeping a close eye, meeting with both the UCU and the university. Um, we, as Charlie said, we've ensured that exam material impacted by strikes will not be examined on universities working out comms with regards to that we're wanting to make it very clear to students um, we've been initiating discussions with ucu postgraduate research members to discuss postgraduate working conditions research culture and uh, issues regarding sick leave um, so that's begun and um, as charlie said we're aware of the marking boycott we're keeping it in mind. We're developing a view. As of yet, nothing is confirmed, but we are aware and we're, we're keeping it in line. Um, papers and pizza, I want to say thank you to people for sitting through me giving the presentation. Um, it's appreciated. Your input is, is really valued and it was good. Good night. Um, education committee, we've been discussing curriculum reform and change to research culture. That's also where a lot of um, striking things have came up. And I'll finish off with uh, MCR Prescom. Um, very productive meetings. We've been talking about, they have an intercollegiate Facebook page. I really recommend people like that to see some uh, social intercollegiate social things they're doing. Um, and we've been discussing upcoming things. I've also resumed doing monthly um, updates now on my social media if you want more um, in depth things. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Any questions? No, nope. thank you. In which case we move to opportunities officer. Thank you, um, go on, hear me? Yep, cool. Yeah. Um, you've had my report in writing, but I'll just quickly go through it um, while I'm here. Um, you've got some numbers there on student group activity. There's almost 24,000 registered memberships for societies at the SU at the minute. Um, and 30% of all students have so far benefited from our push to get um, the university to continue funding free memberships of academic societies, which I think, um, you know, helps people get in touch with the wider academic community a bit better. Um, there's been 56 events involving an external speaker last term, and these were attended by 2,854 members. Um, this term, our society activity operated along the university's same kind of in measures, which have now ended. Um, and you'll have had updates on participate today as well, I believe. Um, governance and grants has been properly constituted and has met again now, so that we've started dispersing grants for student groups. Um, and the student groups committee has also started meeting and processing applications for new groups. Um, but the relevant chairs will give you all the details on that. Um, and the online refreshers fair this year, um, over five and a half thousand visits to the online refreshers fair site. And we hope to use uh, Mailing Castle again as the venue for the freshers fair in October. Um, the process for reforming the student group agreement, as I promised in the election last year, has begun now. Um, we're drafting up a timetable for this now, and that'll be announced shortly. Um, commercial activity is getting back to its pre-coronavirus levels, um, and hopefully we're going to have uh, fresh food again soon. There'll be pizzas on the way in the cafe at some point, but the, the oven's broken at the minute, so might have to wait a bit longer. Um, we've been campaigning still on the Higher Education Freedom of Speech Bill. Um, you've had quite a lot of updates on me about that before, so I won't go into too much detail, but I've been working with other student unions. I'm meeting with the executive of Birkbeck SU next week and also with um, York and York's NUS delegates. So hopefully 
uh, the policy that assembly passed on higher education freedom of speech bill will hopefully get past the priorities ballot and will be debated at conference in liverpool in march um, thankfully we've managed to actually get an amendment through to the bill um, it's removed durham's common room from its scope so i think that it's good to get a bit of a win there the government did actually listen to us and change that so we've managed to remove some durham institutions from from its harmful effects i think um, and I've got a couple of articles coming out recently. Um, there's one in Palatina, which came out today, actually, which you might have seen already. And one in Red Pepper as well, which is a sort of national uh, progressive magazine. Um, for that, as I say, there I received or will receive a 55 quid author's fee, which I'm going to donate to Police Spies Out of Lives, which is a, a campaign advocacy group for women victimised by undercover state surveillance agents. Um, if you've read any of the stuff I've written before, you'll know um, how that's relevant to the, to the bill generally. There's a bit of detail there. And uh, the democracy review is almost done, but I won't go into too much detail because the motion's on the table and plenty of opportunity to talk about that later. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you. Are there any questions? John? So in your written report to the assembly, you said if we, if we pass the uh, proposal for the new mode of membership, we need to have a new motion to amend the standing orders. So am I correct to say, so this um, policy that you're submitting to the assembly floor today has no sort of practical effect on the governance structure of the union and is merely sort of a political policy stance? Yes, I believe that's been the case for every democracy review motion um, in the last couple of years. Uh, can I uh, for, make a further question on this point? Um, due to time restrictions, I think we need to, anyone else have a question? If not, you can have a really small question. Yeah, so if this is not an amendment to standing orders, so in theory, this could be put to a referendum in line with all other policies um, submitted to the assembly. And why is the Governance and Grants Committee keep on frustrating attempts to put this- please, uh, please, can you, please, can you, Related specifically to his update, All the right. update so that he just gave. In your in your proposed uh, democracy review, do you plan on submitting your proposal to a referendum? I don't believe I ever made that commitment, but I'm not the chair of governance and grants either, so I can't comment on that matter. No, I'm I'm asking whether it's, whether you plan on putting this move policy to referendum. It wasn't planned in the past. No, I've never made that commitment. Gary, are you here? Please could you answer this question? I can. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm the Secretary to Assembly, so I um, advise the Chair on matters of governance uh, and the operations for Assembly. Um, Assembly is discussing um, the process of creating standing orders. Um, Assembly has powers to put political policy to referendum um, and campaign policy to referendum. It doesn't have the uh, ability to put questions of standing orders to referendum. Um, now, the point I think that John is making is that asking students, are you in favor of a um, standing order change is different to, are you in favor of a change to the standing orders? They're not. Uh, the trustees have resolved on this uh, and we have to act in line with what they've decided. Uh, John, I think you've been provided with a written account uh, in November, I think. Um, that is still the case and um, it is not in order to put this question to a referendum. Thanks. Okay, we now need to move on to, oh, Josh. Yeah, sorry, just one question. Um, how many people are on governance and grants and who are they? Is that a question for me or for somebody else? Who's, yeah, who's the question? Uh, for you, yeah, sorry. Um, I think we've got an update from the chair of governance and grants, so you'd probably be better addressing that to him. All right, cool. Thank you. Okay, committee updates. Um, please can we have an update from the assembly subcommittees? So each of the committees have two minutes. So first beginning with academic affairs, please. So. Um... On the Academic Affairs Committee, um, it basically consists of the eight faculty reps and the two academic officers of the Students' Union. Um, 
So we only just resumed the meetings uh, this term. I believe there, there was a, um, a small administrative mix up um, in the student union um, last term. Uh, so we have some comments from three of the four uh, faculties of the university. Um, in the business school, um, students are soon to be notified about um, the examination modules which have applied for exemptions um, to, to be in person rather than online. Um, and there is currently a review of um, academic advising taking place. In the Faculty of Science, um, there are conversations going on in the Faculty Education Committees regarding um, the stringent, stringency um, of, of marking and examinations. Um, in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, um, there's a similar conversation going on about um, marking consistency um, as well as stringency, um, and as well as the possibility for um, consistent examination feedback um, along all of the departments. Um, there are new faculty-led modules coming to the Faculty of Arts and Humanities, um, and we are currently talking about um, new faculty academic advisors for liberal arts run by um, sort of faculty hubs, which, which is a current wider, wider conversation within the university. Um, the Faculty of Social Sciences wasn't present at the meeting, um, and I've been requested by um, members of the committee to um, alert assembly to one one minor issue or, or appeal that, that we have, um, which is that the SSCC reps um, are generally quite uncommunicative to high level uh, communications. So even active communication um, tends to fall on deaf ears. That's everything, thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, if not, we move to Duck, please. You have two minutes. Is anyone from Duck Committee here? If not, we'll come back to them at the end. So can we please move on to governance and grants instead? Hello everyone. Um, so we had a meeting last Wednesday, which uh, went over. It was grants for several societies, which related to events and event speakers. Um, I feel like thinking back to it, I think we granted four uh, requests. We had one turned down, and then we're also waiting on. No, we have two turned down, and then we're waiting on one for more information. Um, we also appointed me as chair. And then we also decided the agenda for today's assembly meeting. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Josh? Yeah, just same question. Just wondering how many people are on um, governance and grants? Um, there are five of us, as far as I'm aware. Um, and like a few of those SU offices. Uh, like yeah, how many? Are, yeah, so, yeah, there are two offices there's the, um, the president, and then there's Jack. Cool. Just wondering. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, then we move to JCR Prescom. Two minutes, please. Hello. Um, on JCR Prescom, we have been discussing a whole lot of things, really. Um, we've been talking a lot about um, graduations um, and how to actually facilitate those in colleges um, and our frustrations with the fact that they keep changing the plans and not telling us. Um, we've been talking about how we can better represent um, JCRs um, within the current, like, current system that we have for representation. So trying to kind of allocate portfolios almost within the committee um, so that we can get voices from across JCRs rather than um, just uh, presidents themselves. So trying to consult execs more um, on decisions that happen in working groups. Um, we've been discussing post offer visit days, which um, in the opinion of the committee have been totally kind of ruined by the university. Um, um, don't really serve any of the previous functions that they used to. Um, and we're looking to work with them 
on improving those in future to try and actually get a bit more diversity and accessibility in Durham for students from underrepresented backgrounds. And we see post office visit days as like a key way of doing that. Um, and we've been discussing the latest assembly motion a great deal, which I won't go into any detail on. Um, if people would like to know Prescom's view on it, you're welcome to ask me a question. Um, and we've also been discussing the provision of training and support for common room presidents um, and uh, working with uh, Jeremy Cook's office on that. And that's hopefully gonna get started in the next week or so. Got some meetings about that. Um, and then just all the general runnings of common rooms, balls, events, um, societies, et cetera, et cetera. Um, all the usual stuff. Thank you. Any questions? Jonah? I was wondering what kind of training you after, like what you're looking to. Um, there's quite a few things and it's a really, really broad um, discussion that we're having. Um, and when I say training, uh, it means lots of things really. Um, so I guess one core pillar is support for JCR presidents. We had an interesting meeting with Jeremy Cook where it revealed that he did not actually know who was meant to be line managing presidents and that the policy that had been written had not been being followed in most colleges, actually all colleges except for one. Um, so there was a pretty big error there um, and we're hopefully fixing that and that will have a big difference on actually both the ability of presidents to be supported in their work and have that kind of pastoral care for um, dealing with stressful topics. Um, <laughs> we're also looking into improving the provision of training that already exists. So at the moment, um, common room presidents and treasurers get finance training and they get GDPR training and a couple of other kind of policy based trainings. But the view is broadly that they're not very good trainings that aren't very engaging, aren't very detailed and don't prepare you for real world issues. So we're hoping to kind of improve those. But then we're also looking into other other types of training. So um, particularly around health and safety and first aid, and mental health first aid. Um, these are things that uh, you're kind of expected to go out and seek for yourself, but due to financial barriers and time barriers, you can't often get to. So working together, hopefully trying to source those, but also some topics around like leadership and volunteer management um, is, it's a big job to take on. And a, for some presidents that's easier than others. Um, and so just trying to make sure that everyone feels supported when they're doing that. Um, and yeah, hopefully working across like a broad range of groups and looking at these, working with the SU, with Jeremy's office and talking to Quentin about how that links in with experience. Well, sorry, the Director of Student Enrichment um, on that. Thank you. Um, MCR Prescom, two minutes. Someone hear from that? Okay, we'll move on to the next one, come back. Societies Committee and SU Rep Committee. Hi. Um, so the SU Rep Committee has been talking about a couple of different things. Um, one, we haven't let off on spiking. We're trying to come up with a couple of different ideas and trying to work with the SU, trying to work with Jonah and welfare and stuff and um, seeing if we can find out a, a feasible way because this will just become an issue again in term one the following academic year and we don't want this to be an issue and spiking is still going on right now even though it might not be as reported in the news as it was in the previous term. Um, we've also been talking about like um, LFTs and then um, comparing whether an NHS LFT should be allowed uh, versus people getting uh, them from university but that will be scrapped soon but um, and we have also been talking about the uh, democracy review uh, motion that's coming in today. Um, I won't go too much into that again because it's been a very long discussion. Uh, if anyone would like to ask me any questions about anything, they are more than welcome to. Thank you. Any questions? If not, move to the Societies Committee, please. Yeah, so at the last meeting, we approved several societies. So the Bowles Club, Climate Society, Desi Society, Taylor Swift Society, and One for the World Society. I don't think we had any rejections. 
Um, and we're also planning to host a student group forum soon. So that's going to be a big sort of event at the Hotel Indigo. We're going to invite a bunch of society execs, sort of see how they're feeling towards the SU, see what we can do for them, um, and potentially get some more uh, members for the committee. Um, other things that we want to do is I want to install a secretary on the committee so we can write minutes and put them on the website just to increase transparency. And I'm also contacting the marketing team. So whenever we approve societies, we can have a post up on the student union Instagram. That just gives the societies a bit of a shout out and provides some transparency to what the committee is doing. Um, so yeah, I think that's all we've been doing so far. So uh, if you've got any questions, feel free to shoot one. Thanks, any questions? Okay, do we have the duck representative or MCR Prescom representative here? Okay, we move on to association updates. So each association, we're gonna give you one and a half minutes each. So first up, Students with Disabilities Association, please. Hello, sorry. Um, yeah, so we're in the middle of um, doing lots of things. I've just taken over with my co-president, Simon. Um, we are looking at accessibility within the uni, um, engaging, um, increasing social engagement within our association, um, and looking at what campaigns to run as well. That's everything. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Um, Durham Women's Association, please. Hi, that's me. Um, so we may be mainly focusing on our termly general meeting this time um, because we want to make it bigger and we want to include, we want to improve the representation of our association. Um, and we've been focusing on as well um, International Women's Day and preparations for that um, alongside the college FemSox. That's all for me. Thank you, any questions? Cool. LGBT plus association, please. Yeah, so um, basically what we've been up to is we've been working uh, with Jonah on uh, sort of like the bouncers issues that have been stemming from like uh, Osborne's and some of the other clubs around Durham. Um, separately, we've also got a sexual health campaign that we're running uh, next week, um, sort of focusing on uh, social media um, and publicity about sort of like safe sex and uh, HIV testing and stuff. Um, we're also running a cabaret event with um, Durham Student Theatre and with History Society to celebrate LGBT Plus History Month as well. Um, and then separately from everything else, also um, we've been meeting with uh, Careers and Enterprise to sort of discuss how uh, their services can be tailored towards um, queer identifying students and sort of providing them with the support they need. Um, but yeah, if anyone has any questions, thanks. Thank you. Any questions? We move on to Durham People of Colour Association, please. Oh, so we've basically been working on um, doing anti-racism campaign works with um, staff in particular. Um, we've done um, work with, um, we're planning to do some work with um, detention centre, with um, abolishing the detention centre and just some more events for students and um, potentially like a ball. Thank you. Any questions? Um, Working Class Students Association, next please. Yeah, uh, quite a busy for one for us at the moment. Um, going to start working with Waddington Food Bank soon, kind of more local Durham food banks in general uh, to help them out kind of planning some like karaoke pub quiz events uh, in terms of strikes been a big important one um, so no one gets mistaken Wixer will be supporting them and any other strike any strike action will be on the picket line doing what we can there really interesting talks recently with the one of the heads of politics about the importance of first year seminars and the kind of culture around them what we can do to change them and stop them just becoming from like a kind of middle and upper class talking ground where working class students don't really have the chance to speak. 
welfare training I'm getting for my exec soon. Um, it's a big thing I'm pushing this year. So we're going to carry on that. We're working with Nightline next week. So association week, as Jaron mentioned, taking up a lot of our time. Um, the biggest debating point has been the Spotify playlist. We've got nine people on our exec with completely different music tastes. So trying to figure out something that works there. Kind of similar to the poker, a Wix a day event. Uh, I just found out we had a lot of money that we'd not really used. So kind of looking at like if we can do like similar to a college day, kind of just have a day where working class students can come, obviously keeping it DIY, keeping it not as much uh, like no fees as possible. And then finally, we're going to start working with a uh, PAL TV soon. Hopefully one of our exec members has just got on that and kind of uh, produce a short video on classism in Durham. And if anyone's got any questions. Thank you. Any questions? We move to the Trans Association, please. Come back. Um, International Students Association. Uh, hi, yeah, so the International Students Association has been working on quite a few things. Um, we were working over this Christmas break to ensure that there was a community for the international students that had to stay in Durham. Um, so working on events and making sure that they had a centralized area to communicate. Um, and then we've also been working on EDI with Jonah. Um, and then we've also recently had Lunar New Year, so we had to scale back that event, unfortunately, because of COVID, um, but we were still able to put on a smaller scale event. Um, we've also been working on creating smaller socials and like um, coffee times where uh, international students can just meet up and talk. Um, and then we've been working on collaborating with other organizations and things that have been reaching out to us, as well as increasing social engagement. And then we're also working towards hopefully setting up a ball um, like the other associations we're talking about, because we think that that's quite important. Thank you. Any questions? Okay, Matia Students Association, please. Sorry, I think I've denied um, permission for camera. Um, we have recently had our elections, so we filled out a bit. Um, the sort of we've been looking at creating sort of like a more postgraduate, um, more postgraduate relationship um, discussions with Keenan House about how to sort of get the word out that we exist to postgraduates. We sort of found out that no one sort of knows who we are. Um, again, like um, Jamie was saying, something like an event maybe around graduation for um, mature students who, you know, who don't always access um, events in the same way. So like a, a day sort of fair maybe. Um, also this is going to be coming out more with the with the email today but um about trying to discuss with the university potentially what other associations about vulnerable students we have a lot of older students so the um removal of lfp tests outside events can cause um problems for older students who are more susceptible to illness and serious illness so although we appreciate that people want some freedoms back we do have um responsibility to our students um and yeah parent carers um focusing on them a little bit more um yeah just sort of creating some events and some social things that's it thank you any questions okay and do we still not have anyone from the trans association no okay okay we're going to have a two minute comfort break and come back at 45 before we start the main discussion items so either stay on the chat or have a two minute brain break.
Okay, hopefully everyone's back now. So, um, basically now we move to items for discussion. First, I'm just gonna do a little overview. So this is the part where we debate the motions that students have proposed. Um, a note on minor amendments. So you're able to submit minor amendments during the assembly meeting, but they need to be checked first to ensure it's within assembly's powers. And secondly, it's up to my discretion whether it's debated. So an example of an appropriate minor amendment is changing a word within the motion that doesn't affect the overall intent of the motion. And if you wish to propose a minor amendment, please type it in the chat and yeah, then we'll approve it. So we've got two motions to get through in this section. There's a process to follow for this. Proposer of the motion speaks, opportunity for things to be clarified, which is things that you don't understand in the motion. Um, then we move to speeches for and against, and there's a chance for general comments, which are thoughts. And then we invite people to sum up why the motion should be passed or not. Um, it's set out in the SU governing documents if you want more information, but I'll be taking you through the process. So first item for discussion, is presented by John Chan on ending the use of NDAs in cases of sexual assault, bullying, and other forms of harassment. So John, please can you unmute yourself and you have three minutes to speak on your motion. Yes, uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Chair, the rationale for me to submit this motion to the Assembly is to echo the call from the Minister of State for the Higher and Further Education, uh, Michelle Donian MP, where she has urged universities to sign up to a pledge promising not to use NDAs in case involving sexual misconduct, bullying, and other forms of harassment. It is noted that by the BBC in 2020 that one third of universities in this country has used NDAs in such a scenarios. <laughs> And according to a free information request, the Durham University has spent a, hun uh, has spent a considerable amount of money regarding NDAs that involve student complaints. The reason why NDA is objectionable in these scenarios, the fundamental reason is because it aims to silence the victims and in many cases in, in the expense of, um, for, for the sake of the university's reputation, seeks to silence the victim. And so even if they wish to share the experience or even simply to criticize the university um, for not offering sufficient support for them, they would have been barred from doing so as a result of that NDA. And I know, it is my understanding that the Durham University has signed this agreement, uh, this pledge, but however, of, all, of more than 100 high education institutions in this country, only around 20, less than 30 institutions have signed up this pledge. And therefore this motion, as uh, after you've read my amendments, we seek to urge all higher education institutions in this country to sign up to this pledge. Uh, <clears throat> yes, and also more, in, more, important, uh, more importantly, why it's important is because without, with, without the NDAs, that students could, victims could criticize the university for uh, shortcomings of the disciplinary and victim support process so as to facilitate improvement in these areas. <laughs> and, uh, and I believe only through criti constructive criticism that everyone could benefit from an improved procedure. Uh, yes, uh, that's it, thank you. Thank you. So there have been two amendments on this motion and before we debate the motion submitted, we have to debate and vote on the amendments. So first amendment, um, which John also proposed. Uh, both of them are mine, so. Yeah, so. I could just, is, is it all right if I consolidate the two? No, I don't think so. Because right. they're, if all you right. could speak, do the first one first, because they're separately in there. I see. They're separate, right. so please, you've got three minutes for the proposing the first one. Uh, the first amendment. So as I have explained earlier on in my speech, the reason why I re I, I removed um, the the uh, replaced the the, uh, the lines urging the Durham University to sign a pledge simply because of the fact that Durham University has signed the pledge, which is a very good news. And I think the credit goes to our uh, Wealth and Liberations Officer who campaigned uh, to to the university executive uh, to sign this pledge. 
and so therefore there's no further need of this clause to remain on to remain on this policy but however as i said only less than 30 out of more than 100 higher education institutions in this country has signed a pledge and i reckon this is not enough and therefore with this is that our hope that al almost all higher education institutions could sign up to this pledge uh, by the end of our uh, uh, by, by, uh, in, in, in the future and therefore um the, uh, yeah so this is the first part of my amendment thank you are there any requests for clarification please put your name in the chat or raise your hand okay if not please could we have a speech opposing the amendment Okay, if we have no speech opposing, do we have any general comments? Oh, Jonah? I feel good points were raised by John. Yes, that is my comment. Okay, so now we have, um, John, can you sum up for one minute, please? Uh, Madam Chair, for the aforementioned reason, I invite the Assembly to agree with my amendments. Thank you. Thank you. So we move to a vote. Um, all in favour of this amendment, please raise your hands and keep them up there. Please know them. All those against, please raise your hands. Thank you, and any abstentions? Okay, amendment has passed. Okay, now amendment two. John, you have three minutes to present amendment two. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Now, the Assembly having passed uh, the first amendment to promote uh, the, the signing of this pledge to other higher education institutions in this country, what we need to do is not simply putting things on a piece of paper. It's not it's just about words, 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 and words. No, this is not how things are supposed to be, especially when it comes to the context of supporting victims of sexual assault, bullying, and other forms of harassment. If we want to make changes, we have, not only we have to make changes ourselves, we have to take the initiative and encourage others to do the same. And therefore, in my second amendment, I would, I would, uh, would have it would required uh, officers of the student union to promote this idea to other uh, student representative bodies in uh, higher education institutions. As, as I've said in my in the speech uh, proposing this policy, that uh, of all of more, of more than a hundred higher ed education institutions in this country, less than thirty has signed up to this pledge to this day. This is, um, I, and I sincerely believe that more could be done and more, uh, more universities could sign up to these um, pledges. And I believe through appealing to the student represent representative bodies, we could draw the attention that such a pledge exists and we could persuade them to join, join our cause in making, uh, making, this, uh, making higher, higher, the whole higher education sector a more welcoming and more supportive environment uh, for victims of different kinds of assault. And therefore, for these reasons, I invite the, I, I invite honourable members to support this amendment. Thank you. Do we have any requests for clarification? No. 
speech opposing? No. General comments? Oh, Jonah. Hi again. As the officer that will probably be the lead on this, I was planning to, but I'll, we have meetings with two issues coming up. I'll happily raise it there. I'm sure that other officers will happily raise it in their respective networks. Thank you. Any more general comments? No, okay, we move to summation four, please. John. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, I would like to express my gratefulness to my honourable friend, the Wealth Officer, uh, for taking initiative in this matter in promoting this um, this issue to other student representative bodies. And I and I as for the me reasons I've mentioned, I do in, once again invite honourable members to vote for this amendment. Thank you. Thank you. So we move to vote. All those in favour of this amendment, please raise your hands. Please know your hands. All those against, please raise your hands. Okay, and any abstentions, please raise your hand. Okay, this amendment has passed as well. So we now move to, back to the main motion and we'll be debating it with the two amendments included. So do we have any requests for clarification on this motion now? So if you're confused on an aspect or would like something confirming or clarifying. Wait, let me just shut my window. Okay, um, does anyone have a speech opposing the motion? Okay, do we have any general comments? Okay, please, can we have John sum up for a minute on why people should vote for this motion? Well, throughout the years, um, people from different sectors have expressed their concerns about support for victims of sexual assault and various kinds of abuses. And unfortunately, in some areas, uh, we could have done way better and we could have made the higher education sector a much better place. But I mean, big steps, big things, small beginnings, and we believe in order to make a sort of the, the, to continue the efforts in improving the status quo. And I think that this this sort of pledge would be a perfect opportunity to make these environment, the higher education sector, more welcoming and more supportive uh, to the victims of sexual assault uh, and other forms <clears throat> of abuse. As I've earlier said um, in my speech. I am grateful and great, delighted that our university has signed up to this pledge. But, uh, but also, as I've also said, oh, only, five seconds, sorry. Uh, yeah, so, so for the information reason, I invite you all to support this motion. Thank you. So we move to vote. All those in favour of this motion, please raise your hands. Please know your hands.
All those against, please raise your hands. Please lower your hands and any abstentions. Okay, this motion has passed. Thank you. And just a reminder, please can attendees not vote. Right, so we move now to democracy review proposal on assembly membership. So opportunities officer will present his motion. Um, Jack, you have three minutes to speak on this motion. Thank you. Um, you should all have received an amended version of the motion uh, yesterday with a couple of friendly amendments. I'll just quickly go through it, um, but I assume everyone's read it. Um, you've got the, the numbers of people in the new model in front of you. Um, so the big main changes from the previous one from last June are that instead of 27 academic reps, that was one per uh, department. There are now one, which is the current academic affairs committee, and then four per faculty, which are arts and humanities, sciences, social sciences, the business school, each faculty with two undergrad and two postgrad reps, and seven new open places um, for all students. We've also added um, one place per um, student group category, so that's academic, active, interest, political and causes, culture and faith, professional development and student media. And we've also, for the first time for assembly, given representation to the university enrichment department, which was previously experienced Durham. So that's uh, team Durham sports, uh, music Durham, volunteering, performing arts, all those kinds of wider student experience activities that, um, that the university runs rather than the SU. Um, so I think the motion, the numbers and ratios of people um, that you've got in front of you, I think ac accurately represent the balance of student life at Durham, um, give everybody a say. Um, I'll just talk to the friendly amendments that I've accepted, if I can, um, outside of that part of the motion. Um, I accepted one, which was to change the chair from, from a cross-campus ballot to only elected by assembly. Um, I think it's fair to say that seeing as the role of the chair is just to administer the rules of assembly and run the meetings, it seemed fair to me and acceptable um, that the chair could just be elected by members of assembly. Uh, I think having mandates from all students would probably end up confusing people and make the situation a bit sticky. So hopefully people can agree with that amendment. And the last uh, friendly amendment was uh, the main one, which was um, to remove the section that refers to the election methods for college reps and all the other reps. Um, I've said, um, and I'll say again, uh, the issue of whether college reps are elected by JCRs or not is um, a governance matter for the Board of Trustees, which I haven't got any power over. Um, I can't take it out or in of the motion. Um, it's not really related um, to this. Um, it's basically it's legal guidance provided to the Board of Trustees from before I was even elected as an officer. Um, what I'm hoping to do, even though I haven't got power to change that decision, um, is to work with common room representatives and leaders over the next month before the next assembly um, and come back with an update at that meeting. Um, I believe there is a way forward in that dispute. Um, I'm confident we can come to an agreement um, before the next assembly meeting. Uh, if I could also just address some of the um, confusion about detail that's come out today, you may have seen some articles in Palatinate. Um, just to clarify, the, the, the motion does not propose um, that every student get a vote on the college reps. It's not the case that one college's members can have a vote on another college's rep. Where, where it says cross campus in the motion, it refers to um, student, all students in a particular constituency. So for colleges, all students in the college, for faculties, all students in the faculty. Um, the same for academic reps. Um, students in social sciences don't get a vote on the science rep or the um, business studies rep, anything like that. Um, and yeah, I think, as I said before, um, it was said that um, I said in an article that um, the decision to move from JCR um, elections to college elections was somehow uh, my personal opinion that I just thrown it into the democracy view because that's what I wanted. Um, that's not the case. As I say, it's completely out of my hands. Um, it reflects legal guidance provided to the Board of Trustees. Um, I think that is just about all the detail I can provide. Any questions, go for it. Um, okay, thank you. So we've had procedural motion number five being raised 
Um, so we're just going to have a two minute break while we discuss the consequences. So if you could just stay on this call, please. Okay, thank you. Um, so procedural motion five, based on the standing orders is to not vote on a question. And the consequence of this is that the motion, it doesn't mean that the motion fails, it just means that you won't vote on the motion during this meeting. So basically what happens now is I need to ask for five people to support the procedural motion. And if you, support it, then there's debate. If not, then the procedural motion fails. So everyone that supports this procedural motion, please raise your hands now. Okay, thank you, please raise your hands. So now we're debating for this procedural motion, which is to not vote on a question. So please, can I have someone speaking in favor of this procedural motion? Ilana, yeah, you have two minutes. Hi, um, yeah, so it was something that the SU Rep Committee and um, I discussed at our meeting yesterday that these, the papers only came out seven days ago exactly, and that amendments were only submitted yesterday, less than 24 hours to us to have less than 24 hours for us to have a discussion about amendments, about um, the motion in general. And whilst we may not inherently be objecting to this, we don't think that this has provided enough time for us to substantially consider every single part of it and or come up with any other perhaps solutions to the issue that is at hand, because we understand that it is a legal issue, um, particularly in regards to college uh, places versus SU reps, which is particularly uh, an important issue for us. But it, again, we just think that there hasn't been enough time and we would like to go into more thorough depth and be able to come back at the next assembly, vote on something appropriately so that we can do it to the best of our own due diligence. And, you know, at the next assembly, we can see how it goes. We're not saying that it shouldn't be debated. We're not saying that something perhaps shouldn't be passed in the future, but there is time needed so that it can be appropriately addressed and talked about with our execs, which only meet once a week um, and have other things going on as well. We can't have a three hour long exec meeting because this topic would take over a solid hour of our time. And if it comes out on the wrong day, then we have no chance to speak to our exec about it. Um, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Um, I just had a clarification from a question from someone, I'm just going to say it to everyone. So the effect of this procedural motion would be that um, there would be no debate and the motion would not be discussed until, until if it were to be resubmitted at the next meeting. So we now move to 
um, a speech against the, the procedural motion. Please raise your hand. Yeah, Alfie, you have two minutes. Um, I think that we should discuss this motion. Um, I'm not speaking in favour of the motion in any way, but I think that the motion should be discussed. There isn't another forum where you bring together people from all these different groups together. Um, and I think that there are some valid points and some suggestions that can be raised in assembly now that could then be taken forward and included in a future motion. So to cut off debate on this motion, I think would probably be cutting off some very good discussion of, um, of a very important topic. Thank you. Um, so we now move to a vote. Everyone in favor of this procedural motion, please raise your hand. Please lower your hand. Um, everyone again, just please raise your hand. Thank you, please lower your hands. And any abstentions, please raise your hand. Okay, this procedural motion hasn't passed. And just to remind attendees not to vote. As only assembly members can vote. Okay, so now we move to debate of amendments. So there were five amendments submitted that need to be debated. Um, amendment one. Um, so, John, you have three minutes to present your amendment. Yeah, so my first amendment regarding my election. So under <clears throat> current uh, the proposal, if there is a vac if there's the membership there, well, one is going to be vacant. And in terms of replacing that vacancy, that would be decided by elected committee. Uh, I personally find it rather undemocratic to do so. Uh, for I remember... Uh, I think Declan, who mentioned um, in in his uh, in the peace and policy uh, meeting, that the exec of that committee may decide to sort of appoint someone to fill in that seat. I personally find it most undemocratic to do so, and in line of parliamentary procedure in many parts of the world, I reckon it is important that when a fake then a seat is vacant, a by election should be held. To, uh, to be held um, to fill that place. Whether that place, the, the place that should be vacant is a, uh, is a committee seat or is, a, is, a, is a, like an open, is a place seat, that is subject for discussion. But the bottom line is, in, li in line with our democratic values, there must be a by-election. Thank you. Thank you. Any requests for clarification? Declan? Yeah, I would just like to ask John why you're raising the point of parliamentary um, behaviours when this is SU Assembly. We're talking about ways to streamline it. I know we're democratic. We are a democratic body. This would help make it democratic. Um, having people with associated characteristics vote for their own or um, a point as a, as a way of sorting that is a way of streamlining the democratic process. And I just want it explained, please. Thank you. Uh, so two parts, uh, two, two parts to that response. The first part, well, well, the assembly has two functions, 
to, to sort of uh, draft policies and to scrutinize officer. And from an objective point of view, this could be construed as a legislative function. And I find it most reasonable uh, to take reference to uh, practice in other legislatures. So the second part about streamlining, yes, of course, simply appointing someone is, is, is of course easier, it's faster. All you need to is do is sign a piece of paper. But is this something, is this something truly democratic? Is it something what our constituents truly want? Simply appoint uh, voting for someone and it's something if you have another body sort of to appoint someone on their, to, to, to sort of become their representatives. And I find this is a small cost of inefficiency that we have to pay uh, when it's, um, it's a sort of a small cost of inefficiency that is worth paying. Jack? Um, yeah, thanks. I'm just a little confused about exactly what the amendment intends to do. Um, if I'm reading it correctly, it replaces the entire section um, that refers to how groups such as associations would elect their representative and replaces it entirely with something that only refers to a by-election. Um, am I reading it wrong or, or not? So, um... If I'm if I didn't misconstrue your initial proposal, so you said so when there's an assembly place that is being elected by a person who's also a member by virtue of a core constituency, then the then the core constituency would be filled by the by the elect by um, sort of by taken by the chair of that uh, core constituency. What I intend to do is to reverse this so that member would re would retain his seat in the core constituency. And instead, the, the assembly place becomes vacant and a by-election will be held to, to fill that place. Any further requests for clarification? Yeah, Juna? I know you have a further amendment about association elections. Will this affect how associations get someone assembly? Is that what's happening here? Uh, I think in this uh, amendment, I think what, was, I think what I'm trying to do is to keep the, the association place as un, un, uh, unaffected as possible. Therefore, the by-election is held in the place and not the core constituency seat. Yeah, Juna. Um, what would this by-election look like? Would it be different for different positions, i.e. if there's a because people come to SU through different bodies, for different structures, would it matter where they come from? Uh, whether the well, of course, it doesn't matter where they're coming from, but the, but the, and but the rationale is you you shouldn't hold two seats at the same time, and so that is the core rationale. Sydney. I don't know if I'm just getting really confused, but what do you mean that you shouldn't be able to hold two seats at one time? Like, does this, is this everyone um, that holds two positions? So is that the, you know, the press comm chair can't hold, then also hold an assembly seat? I don't really understand. If I would like to draw your attention to the uh, Democracy Review, uh, the report by the consultancy firm, and, and it says that sometimes the membership is not as large as a, um, claim to be because many people have hold due seats. Can you on, answer the specific question that she posed? Uh, specific question. Um, yes. I, yeah, I, I do not believe that people should hold two seats because if you get two seats, you only got one vote and it sort of undermines the representation of the two constituencies that you're representing at the same time. Does that answer your question, Sydney? Um, I actually think I'm more confused now, if I'm being honest, so no. Um, Do you want to ask it again? Yeah, like, so an assembly, your, your assembly seat is you're representing the people that you've been elected to represent through your association. So I'm not, I'm not holding two different seats, I'm, I'm holding one seat, I'm just, it's an it's a extension of my role. Uh, no, what I'm trying to say, if you elect on a core constituency, like an association, and then go on to run for like an, for an assembly place, that is where the problem begins. And I mean, when it comes to representation from association, that's in my next amendment. So I think it would be better if we discuss that there. Okay, Jack. 
Um, yeah, thanks. I don't know if I'm going mad or something, but I don't believe that part of the motion actually refers to people holding two seats. It refers to um, things like the association places. Um, so for the LGBT plus association, the intention is that the association can nominate either their chair or president or another um, another member of their committee. Um, I don't believe it refers to doubling up on memberships. Uh, Madam Chair, I find this most uh, extraordinary, but I wonder if so, um, I mean, Jack Ray, so is like a member of exec also sort of a holding seat of assembly. So in your proposal, are you suggesting that um, that the assembly seat for that association will be elected within that association and not by default the, the exec member? Could you rephrase the question, please? So you, you're saying so, and, and, and so the reason why you have this uh, line is because um, like there's uh, there's an ex so there's a uh, member on the assembly for that association also being on the exec. Am I am I correct on that or am I mistaken? No, it refers to where an association is given a place on assembly as they currently are. They can choose either their president or another member of the committee. So under your post of association presence, still keep a seat or I'm, I'm a bit confused. Association presidents or a member of the committee. I see. Um, Jack, are you referring? Can we just have a two minute break for one minute? Okay, so um, basically members are voting on the text of the amendment as has been circulated, um, which will become policy if it's voted on. So if you could read the text again so that, and remind yourselves of what it actually says. Does, it, does do people have the text in front of them? So it's replacing where an assembly place is housed by a student elected by a core cool constituency, that constituency can decide who takes the place. With where an assembly place is held by a student elected by a core cool constituency, a by-election shall be held in that constituency to fill the vacant place. So you see the two bits. So does anyone have any questions now? Jonah? So if that's the text, I don't understand the use of the word by-election. Because from my perspective, the original bit of text refers to the way people are elected onto assembly. And then you say by-election. By-election is when you have a vacant spot on assembly, you want to fill it. So number one, and then number two, I think your intention was to have the open places cannot be filled with um, people who are already on assembly. I thought that was your intention. Do you feel that comes across and what you've written now, reading it again, because I personally do not. Um, yes, I think that sort of speaks my mind, because um, on, on, on the, uh, constructing the, the original uh, 
line. So he says like assembly place help so assembly place help our students. So that's he like he got elected on the assembly and uh, and then so and but he's also elected by core constituency. But doesn't this suggest a dual membership? Okay, I think we're just going to move to um, speech as posing because time. But Jonah, you couldn't have a last question. I know that this is speech of posing. Okay, Jonah, yeah. um, two minutes. Okay, um, so I think when we're writing policy and voting on policy, we have to be very clear on what we're actually voting for. And I feel that the dual role where people run for two positions at usage on I don't see that reflected in the text. What I do see is a question more hard to understand amendment. That I still not sure I fully understand, even though I know your intention, that risks replacing elections with by-elections, which doesn't actually make sense. It's illogical. Furthermore, we've seen the associations, a couple of divisions have had problems with it where they feel it risks their position. I think it'd be better to vote against this, go back, reword it if necessary to get the original vote and bring it into a motion in the future. I don't think we should be voting on something fundamentally very hard to understand that has not been, in my opinion, properly explained in this assembly, even though there's been multiple chances to do so. That's not a personal slight against you, John, in any way. That's just how I feel. And I think I speak for quite a few people on assembly who have asked you several questions. The answers were not sufficient. Does anyone have a speech supporting the amendment? Does anyone have a general comment? Yeah, sure. Um, it's just about going back to what um, Elena said uh, a couple of minutes ago about accessibility and by-elections and the fact that people are full-time students on top of protected characteristics. So I would just um, ask everybody to think about um, what accessibility actually looks like um, with frequent elections, if it's a good or bad thing. Thank you. Thank you. Any other general comments? Okay, so person against, sum up, please, Jonah. Got 30 seconds. I may get this motion because it isn't this amendment, because it's not clear the intention, and we have to vote on the text, not the, the intention. Thank you. Um, John, sum up, 30, 30 seconds um, for the amendment. I think the problem with the whole thing is simply um how about about democratic accountability as able to replace a representative when when you're holding two seats it's simply unfair just to hold one having two seats and simply one vote and that's much of the argument really thank you now we move to a vote all those in favor of this amendment please raise your hands please lower your hands for those against this amendment, please raise your hands. Please know your hands. Please could you lower your hands. And any abstentions? Please lower your hands. Sorry, I was waiting for the counting to be confirmed.
Okay, this amendment has not passed. We now move to amendment two. Um, Madam, Madam Chair, I beg to withdraw this amendment. Amendment two? Yes. I'm just checking one second. Um, yes, it can be withdrawn, if you wish, sir. Yes, it's just my intentions to do so. Okay, amendment two has been withdrawn. Um, move to amendment three. You have three minutes. Two minutes, actually. Uh, two or three? Two minutes. Yes. Um, so the fundamental reason I would like to see um, this, uh, this, these open places being with, uh, removed uh, simply for, for, uh, for one reason. I do not think there is further justification in keeping these open places. If we look back into how with open places in the beginning, uh, these open places are sort of reserved for uh, man, uh, minority bodies. But however, if we, if under the, the new um, proposal, we're already having all the association uh, place uh, association reps already, which basically covered most of the areas uh, that sort of uh, that's that's the minority seat needs to be represented. Uh, one one example uh, in, during this year's um, one of the open places, the places for women, and apparently we also we already have a Durham Women's Association rep on the assembly, and I simply see that uh, there's no further need in keeping these open places. And if you're speaking of an open uh, campus-wide vote, and I further see no point because we already have representation from all uh, corners of sectors of Durham University. And I'm and considering that uh, simply having uh, open uh, large places simply redundant. And considering we're in already increasing the size of the assembly, having an additional seven seats, it would only uh, complicate things. And of course, uh, in contrary to efficiency, with more people on it, with more time to use on, uh, spend on voting, on spend on speech, then simply there's not the sort of streamlining that many people would like to see. Thank you. I'll take one request for clarification. Okay, anyone have a speech opposing? Um, I didn't see which hand went up first. Okay, yeah, Liam, you have one minute to speak. Hi, yes, so I think the purpose of this is to increase the number of assembly seats. I think removing open position merely furthers centralization of the issue and limits representation for not all students are members of um, societies, for example, from which a wider student experience constituency um, consisting um, of um, different members derived from those group committees would represent. Whereas open positions um, such as mine, an undergraduate representative attains representation for a far larger body. Open positions are open-ended in nature, meaning that they can represent a chosen body without being bound to anything other than the body itself, um, which is particularly beneficial for views from a range of sources, from a range of political beliefs, proportionally representing views of the electorate. I fail to apprehend how constricting representation to the close-ended student students' groups place, which are necessarily limited by items on their agenda, is more democratic than keeping and maintaining open positions. Thank you. Um, I just need a one minute break because I'm just going to ask something.
Okay, um, do we have any speech supporting the amendment? Um, any general comments? Jonah? To my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, someone please. Um, we've taken away the specifics of the open places. So these are just seven open places for anyone to take. It doesn't matter if there's a, an overlap with certain immigration groups. To my understanding, please correct me if I'm wrong, someone. Jack? Can I just check, are there going to be any more speeches opposing or if I have something to say, do I have to say it now? I just asked, because um, there has to be a balance, but there was no four. But you can make a general comment. I would just say that the, the point of the open place is um, when we drew up this model, the idea of assembly is to reflect all parts of student life at Durham. We've got societies, associations, colleges, sports, um, academic life. Um, but there are people that aren't really involved in any of those. There are people that don't go to societies, don't get involved in their colleges, um, don't do sports, and people that don't really care about their degree, um, you know, just go to the classes to and that's it. Um, I think it's important to have a place for people, you know, who don't do any of those things to be on assembly. Uh, uh, with, your, with due respect, I cannot seem to quite agree with that. And even if that is the case, uh, some people completely not involved in anything, which is, uh, to be very honest with you, quite a rarity in the Durham context. Uh, question is, do we do we? Can okay, you please keep seven, it to the general comment? We actually need seven seats. To, to represent this group of people and I say answer simply I do not think so and therefore we shouldn't have the open places. Sydney? Um, it's just a general comment um, as far as I'm aware there's no replacement in the other um, amendments there was a remove and then a replace this is just a removal so there's nothing to replace the seven seats with it is just a removal um, so yeah I think that's just either whether I, it's not about supporting or anything it's just a general comment. Thank you, Jonah. Yes, um, so just a comment on the association and representation of liberation groups. There are liberation groups that fall under the associations, but the associations are very broad tent groups. Uh, international students, students of color, LGBT students, all can have different experiences. So this could be another way that those groups who might, that one association member may struggle to represent, can also be represented. Thank you. Uh, Jack? Uh, yeah, just two points in response to John. Um, it might be rare that people aren't involved in anything, but the point of assembly is to represent everybody. So even if it's only a few people, if you still be on assembly, um, if you thought the issue with the number of open places was the number of them, you could have moved an amendment to reduce it, but you didn't. You moved an amendment to get rid of them all. OK, due to time constraints, I'm sorry, I need to move on to summation. Um, so person against? Can sum up. Yep. 
Yeah, Jack. I mean, I'll just re repeat everything I've said. Um, the point of assembly and the point of doing this motion is to make sure that every student at Durham is represented, even if it's just a few that aren't involved, they should still be represented. Um, and I don't think getting rid of all the open places um, would be conducive to that. Um, there, 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 are, there are people who are involved in societies and colleges, um, but who might not feel they want to stand in elections for those places because you know maybe they're not as well connected or something. Um, I think it's a good idea to have something that anybody can stand for. Thank you. Um, John, you have 30 seconds to sum up for your amendment. Uh, well, I sim the, the whole point is I think the amount of those people falling into that category uh, so uh, that's just, I mean, that's not quite justify having seven seats. And I simply see no reason just why we having just one or two seats elected by large, but that because that's that's against the spirit of a standard transferable vote system. And then, and I think simply and for the efficiency of the assembly, I think the, the, the present model with the number of members are really too large. And I think reducing these seven seats is quite a um, desirable position. Okay, vote. So everyone in favor of this amendment, please raise your hands. Please lower your hands. Everyone against the, the amendment, please raise your hand. Please lower your hands. Sorry, please could everyone lower the hand. And have any abstentions? Okay, this amendment has failed. Um, next amendment, amendment four. Um, John, you have one minute to present it. One minute. Yeah, so uh, the hope, the rationale of this amendment is simply to clarify the position, uh, the seats for postgraduate students. And I, this, I reference the current arrangement of how assemblies, uh, the seating of the assembly, where there's one representative for postgraduate taught and the other one for postgraduate research. Whereas I'm an undergraduate myself, there's some understanding that these people from postgraduate taught and postgraduate research programs have, uh, do not have uh, the same needs. And I think it would be better if they have got separate representation so that their needs could be well addressed on the assembly. Any requests for clarification? I'll take one. Um, anyone opposing the amendment? You have, yeah, one minute, please. Um, there was actually a previous draft of this motion that had this model of postgraduate representation in it. Uh, we decided to change it mainly because we thought there would be such a lack of um, engagement with postgraduate research students. Um, we find it difficult already to get them involved in assembly. Um, and we thought it would be more practical simply to have two postgraduate places. Um, that's pretty much the long and short of it. Thank you. Um, does anyone have a speech supporting the amendment? Yeah, Ange, you have a minute. Um, yeah, I just think um, having that representation that kind of makes sense. Uh, even if like PGRs are less involved, I think maybe that's more of a reason. Like I'm speaking as a PGR. Um, and it just ensures that, you know, we do have that balance of views that, because 
the issues faced by PGTs and PGRs are different. Like PGRs are like, like many PGRs are in a way like staff as well. And so that's um, an important distinction between PGTs and PGRs because PGRs do, many do teach. Uh, and so the issues are different there. Uh, and yeah, I just, in, in terms of like PGRs not being engaged, I think, I don't know, I just hope that like Dharma Sea would like try to get them more engaged, I guess. Um, and I guess that's a responsibility for those of us who are active PGRs, you know, to get our fellow PGRs engaged as well. Um, so yeah, it's, that's, I say that's why it's a good thing to have these reser reserved for them. Thank you. Any general comments? Declan? I'll take you too, that's it. Yeah, I just um, want to note that the fact that the original text uh, before the amendment doesn't exclude PGRs, it's just um, this amendment would spe specifically only want PGRs, so the original text includes both PGTs and PGRs and would have that kind of representation. It's not exclusive. Thank you, Liam. Yes, so I was going to ask a question of a similar nature, but it's been resolved. Oh, thank you. Um, please, can I have someone summing up against this amendment for one minute? Yeah, Jack. Um. All I'll say is I spoke again so that I could justify the fact that it was in the motion in the first place. Um, I am happy to be guided by assembly on it. Um, you know, there are, there are good points on both sides. I'm happy to, you know, go with whatever people want, really. Thank you. And um, John, uh, one minute. <clears throat> yes, I, I too stand by the, my previous statement regarding how uh, have postgraduate taught and postgraduate research have different needs and I think therefore they should be represented differently. The risk of having the two seats mingled together that may that may may run the risk of postgraduate researchers need may not be adequately presented in the assembly. Thank you and we now move to a vote. All those in favour of this amendment please raise your hands. Please lower your hands. For those against, please raise your hands. Please lower your hands. And any abstentions? Okay, this amendment has failed. Um, Okay, so we now move back to the main motion. Um, amendments one to four have not passed and amendment five to six um, have been accepted as friendly as Jack stated. So we move back to the main motion. Does anyone have any requests for clarification on the motion?
John? Yeah, so I see uh, your, the amendment you've accepted, amendment number six, removed the references uh, to college representation. So what will happen now? Simply, do, do we maintain the status quo or is that yet to be uh, resolved? Uh, my intention is to come back in a month uh, with an update on that. That's in a minute, you can hold me to that. Any other requests for clarification? Okay, can we have a speech opposing the motion? Two minutes. Alfie? Um, I think that there are some really, really great ideas in this motion. I think that there are some some excellent sections of it. I think some things have been really, really well thought through. Um, I'm very supportive of the changes to the academic section. I think they work a lot better than the previous models that have been proposed. Equally, I agree that switching a lot of the places to reps um, is a great idea, um, rather than just having them linked to certain roles. Um, I'm not going to comment on the college section because it's not relevant to the motion, and I do want to engage in a dialogue and I think everyone wants to engage in a dialogue about that but I do think that there are things that in here that have not been worked out fully and it it shouldn't pass now so that so that we can properly reconsider this and bring it back to the next assembly I think the main area that needs reconsideration is the wider student experience section we haven't discussed that in assembly so far um, and I think that needs a really thorough debate on it actually the main issue I see with that is the university enrichment department reps I don't think that section has been thought through at all I've spoken to a number of different individuals including Including the proposer and not a number of people at papers and pizzas about this and i'm not sure that anyone's actually sure how that's going to work as someone who has a background in being on the exec of a university enrichment department um a section of that i don't currently un really understand how that would fit in with the governance structure of that at all to my knowledge there are like six different sections of the university enrichment department and they each work differently they each have different membership models some are levy paying some aren't some have big committees some have small committees some have a lot of staff input some don't um, and I think that's quite a major thing that needs to be worked through exactly how those reps are going to be put onto assembly. And I don't think we should pass a motion that has that in its current form. And I didn't intend to amend it because I, I think that needs more dialogue than the time we were given. Um, I also don't think that the student group places have been thought through properly. A number of issues were raised around this at Papers and Pizza about how the groupings that are going along with the way that the SU groups them is not necessarily actually the best way that they should probably be represented in assembly. I think you'd run into some issues, particularly with the po political and causes section and with the culture and faith section, where you have potentially some content contentious ideological religious debates going on there. And there's better ways of representing those debates than necessarily having one rep um, per section. I also think that this that it's unclear how those student groups places would be elected. It's unclear how the membership and the voting and the eligibility for those voting and membership um, would be enacted. And we need more clarity in a motion that's going to cover those. I also think that they are over. Sorry, that was two minutes, 30, but there you go. can have three minutes if you've got more to say. I was just one final comment. I was just going to say I think that the student group places, those seven sections, are overweighted, considering the university enrichment department reps currently get three places, despite, to my knowledge, making up a lot more of the student group activity than what would necessarily fall under student groups under the SU. If I'm wrong about that, please do correct me. But equally, if even if I am wrong about that, I do think that seven to three is a bit of a misbalance. And then when you're also taking into account student group committee and duck committee, it'd be nine to three. Um, which I think is a huge misbalance. It also kind of does. Um, <coughs> Sorry, oh, well, I'll, I'll just leave it there. I'll leave it there. I think it sums up my my points. Like the wider student experience committee section is really not worked out. Does anyone have a speech supporting the motion? Maximum of two minutes. Do we have any general comments? John? Yes, I think, uh, well, whilst this uh, version of the Democracy Review is way more acceptable than the previous one, but however, 
them, there's so many outstanding issues that has to be discussed upon. And I re, uh, and what I suggest is we should hold hold on to this, and we should engage. Not, not comment, to, please, just. And I and invite the student union to engage with the wider student body to see their opinion on the reform, and not just coming to us reps. Sharon. I would just like to counter that and say that this is democracy review has been two years in the making. Two that's two years worth of consultation with students. So that's two rounds of undergraduates, postgraduates, people from liberation societies, people that aren't from liberation um, associations, these from student groups, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea that consultation has not been had, I don't know, I think is quite weak, but my general comment is um, it is two years in the making. Thank you. Um, due to time constraints, and these are just general comments, we're going to move now to summation. So person against, you have two minutes to sum up. Please, can we have someone summing up against this motion? Sorry, is that is that meant to be me because I spoke against? I'm yeah, it can be. It doesn't have to be. I'm happy to sum up the points again. I, I think a number of a number of concerns have been raised um, both at this assembly today. Uh, it's great that we had this debate so that those concerns could be raised. I think a number of concerns were raised at the papers in pizza. Um, on the whole, there's obviously um, the contentious issue of colleges, which we haven't discussed today, and that can be reconsidered. And hopefully if we come forward in the next meeting, taking into account a lot of the issues that have been raised in this meeting today, we'll get a proposal that everyone will be a lot happier with. Um, I don't think anyone is against the, the ideas as a whole presented, and, and I think everyone would agree that there are ideas in here that are, that are very good. It's just that we need to further refine this. Um, uh, not necessarily taking into account more views um, would back up Shern's point that lots of people have been consulted on this. What is the point in a rep if not to represent students, um, but that we, we can just work on this a little bit and refine those, refine those points, get it perfect for the next assembly meeting. Thanks. And for the motion, summation, Jack, you have one minute. Um, so yeah, I would just say that this motion, I'll, I'll respond to a couple of the points um, in terms of consultation. This is the, the final part of the democracy review, which was based um, almost two years ago now um, on a fairly big consultation with students. Um, it took a lot of time, it took a lot of effort, a lot of research, which is in writing, which you can find, it's, it's well known. Um, this motion has already been discussed by assembly um, last June. This current version is already based on feedback from that meeting and from the original research. Um, in terms of the wider student experience thing, um, I take the point on the university enrichment department reps. I would have welcomed an amendment to that, um, to be honest. Um, in terms of societies, um, the motion society categories, as Alfie noted, are based on the existing categories of society um, at the SU. Um, you might have found ways to, um, you know, separate different groups, opposing groups within those categories, but I'm not sure how you will get around that without creating a Labour Party and Conservative Party rep or, or a Muslim society and a Christian society rep. Um, can you wrap up? I'm not entirely sure that's an issue that could be resolved in that way. Thank you. Okay, we now move to a vote. Oh. We just stop for two minutes.
sorry, a procedural motion has been called, but we just need to check consequences. Bear with us for two minutes. Um, I've been told by Natasha that I can have 30 seconds to make a final point, if that's all right with everybody. Um, I just want to address the JCR question because I know it's not something that we've really talked about um, tonight. Um, all I'll say is that it, it has been removed from the motion, that section. Um, it is a governance point um, that I can't change, that Assembly can't change, um, and the, the, the rest of the Board of Trustees. I'll be doing everything I can in the next month to resolve it to everybody's satisfaction. Um, and I'll come back in a month with an update on that. But I would ask you just not to not to crucify the motion on that point, if that's what's in your mind at the minute. Okay, um, so we've had procedural motion voted by ro roll call submitted. Do we have any supporters for this procedural motion? Please raise your hand. Okay, um, that's more than five. Um, can we have someone speaking for the procedural motion of voting by roll, roll call for 30 seconds? Yes, um, the reason why I call a vote call because this vote, uh, this motion is a motion of political significance for the student union. And I think for the sake of transparency and the political accountability, I think we should never know well who voted for what tonight. Okay, and someone against for 30 seconds? Jonah? 
the meeting is recorded. Da, da, da. Doesn't that ensure transparency? If everyone's votes are recorded. Okay, and now I'm voting all those in favour of the procedural motion to vote by roll call. Please raise your hands. Please lower your hands. All those against this procedural motion, please raise your hands. Please lower your hands. Could everyone lower their hand, please? Any abstentions? Okay, this procedure motion has failed. So we move to vote normal methods. Um, wait, Sharon, you have your hand up? Okay, cool. Um, all those in favor of this motion, please raise your hands now and leave them up there so we can count. Please lower your hands. Will those against, please raise your hands. Please lower your hands. Can everyone, yeah, and any abstentions? This motion has failed. Um, That is everything from the agenda. Thanks everyone for coming. Thank you for sharing. Thank you.